Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So today I want to talk to you about the left hand and the violin because I'm getting a lot of comments about people asking about tension in the left hand. Can I talk a little bit more about the left hand? And um, I will admit it's probably not something, it's not a video I have actually ever made on my channel. I've never really kind of addressed it. So um, I thought I would talk about that today, but before I do, I, I just really wanted to tell you all about my one to, thir one to 30 violin course uh, with the books that you can see in the background because it's a really, really good course. And I know a lot of you, a lot of you don't know that anything like this exists and I have this. So um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about that now because it is such an amazing course. So this one to 30 violin course that I've got behind me consists of 30 lessons and five books. And what my online course will do is take you from an absolute complete beginner on the violin. So you know nothing about nothing, music, violin, absolutely nothing. And my course will guarantee guaranteed to take you to a decent, accomplished, intermediate player just with these 30 lessons. So these lessons aim to teach and give you the, the skills, the information and the knowledge needed to be able to go off and learn and play any piece by yourself. There's no learning by rote or anything like that. I am a true believer in learning the classical way. So I am a classically trained musician and I teach very classically as well. And my ethos is to give my students the information, skills and the knowledge they need to be able to go out in the world and, and do whatever it is they want. So if I'm giving you out that information, you can then assimilate that information yourself, all in the comfort of your own home. You will be able to pick up any piece of sheet music you like and work it out and be able to play it with all the information given to you in this course. As I said, the course is 30 lessons. It consists of five books and everything is downloadable from my shop. There is nothing physical to ship out. These are just books that I have printed out for my printer at home and then I've just bound them together myself Myself, but everything is downloadable. So the second you have paid, you will then get a link that you can download the books and you can look at it on your tablet, your computer, your laptop, you can print them out, you can have them professionally printed, whatever you feel you wanna do. But as soon as you've paid, you can literally be starting your journey to playing the violin. Okay, so with the left hand on the violin, um, it's probably important for me to mention at this point that there are really kind of two main ways, I don't wanna say two main ways, because if someone's holding it ever so slightly different, you know, they're gonna think, well, you know, I'm holding it wrong. But when I say two main ways, um, what I mean by that is, you can either hold the violin with the kind of pad of your thumb, this kind of part of your thumb on the, the neck of the violin, either there or underneath, you know, depending on whether you're on the G string, it's gonna slide under. If you're on the E string, it's gonna be kind of up to the side. Mine's gonna be kind of no more than kind of poking a few millimeters above if I'm on the kind of A or the E string. And if I'm on the D string, then my thumb is gonna slide underneath. Now that's kind of one way of holding the, the neck of the violin and how I do it. So I'm gonna go into detail about that in just a moment. The other way that some people teach is where you're holding with more of the side of the violin. So maybe more in that kind of that first kind of crease in the knuckle. Now, I, my, my information uh, is very limited on this because I don't play this way and it isn't something that violinists ever get taught, you know, oh, here's one way of doing it and here's another way of doing it. It doesn't really work that way. You generally get taught the way your teacher was taught and the way, the, the way they were taught and the way they were taught. So it just depends whether you went down the left-hand path or the right-hand path. It really doesn't matter. No way is more right or wrong than the other. This is just the way I do it. So forgive me if you do hold the violin this way and, and I am kind of a little bit a little bit off with it. It's just because I don't hold the violin this way. But some people do sort of hold it where their thumb is more up like this and therefore they're gonna have a slightly different grip on the violin. So I'm not gonna say any more about that because I don't play that way. So I don't have any more information on that way and if I continue to talk about that, I'd just be talking about something, I'd just be talking out the back of my head about something that I know nothing about. So I'm not gonna do that, but what I am gonna talk about is the way I hold it and a few tips on the left-hand grip. Now, I'm gonna work under the assumption here that 
you guys that are watching this video and the ones that my the people that I'm talking to and my audience are, are learning from from me um, with with my course because that's how I teach you to hold the violin in in my lessons my one especially in lessons I think it's lesson lesson one or lesson two we go over that so I'm assuming that you're following my course or this is just how you are holding the violin if you are not then um, I, I would probably ignore most of this video because it might not be relevant to you and I don't want you to kind of go changing hand grips and things like that so if you are holding the way I teach you to hold which is this way a lot of you are saying that you're finding it uh, quite um, quite restricted around around here now I'm wondering because I can't when when people are commenting I can't actually see what's going on so I don't really know kind of the full story but what I think is probably happening here is you guys are holding it like that or intending to but maybe you are sliding up a bit further then you're also trying to do the techniques that I'm doing not realizing that your thumb that your thumb is actually sliding up further and it's kind of the violin is now sitting in that kind of little groove in there where you're very much restricting your hand. Now the reason why I have my thumb there is just partly because I've been doing it for 35 years but the reason is is that I have freedom and access for my hand to go wherever I want it to go. So if my thumb is the pivotal point here I mean look how much air is going around there there's like you know I could get like a football in the palm of my hand with all this room that I've got going on in here now if you're holding in there then you're much more restricted and that is a different way of kind of playing and teaching and stuff as I say that that isn't my that that isn't the way I, I was taught and the way I teach but I think what you're trying to do is you, your thumb isn't where it should be and you're over gripping so when I play this is where this is where my hand is maybe if I hold it up that way and just twist it around so you can see that my my thumb sticks out about mm, half a centimeter maybe over the top there if that just focuses in and then my hand is here so I guess I am holding the other side of the violin there so we're kind of like that so can you see it would be like drawing a line there so the pad of my thumb is there and that's where we are with my finger now what that means is is that I've got all this gap let me come up and show you there I've got this kind of I've got this gap here I'm sorry, poking my finger through there. <laughs> Looks a bit strange. But I've I've got this this air. I've got all this gap here. You know what I mean? As you can, if you can sort of see that there. Let me come around this way. So you can see I've got I've got a lot of gap around the violin. There you go. So you can see the gap a bit better there. So when I've got my hand on, I've still got. I know my palm of my hand covers it. I've still got that gap there, but. I just my point is is that I've got a lot of a lot, I've got a lot of air so my violin is there but this little triangle here is always open and I think what's happening is that you're all just uh, you're all gripping the violin like you're like you you you're, I don't know you're like grabbing a baseball bat or something so never grip the neck of the violin you want to have that wrist down I think the key is to have the palm of the hand and this wrist down when the wrist is up, you, you can't move. So number one, you can't do vibrato. You physically can't. Number two, you can't shift positions because your wrist is gonna be hitting into the violin. And number three, you're gonna have a lot of tension on your hand. Now, as I said, I can't, I can't quite see what's happening. So something ever so slightly different might be happening for you and you might be thinking, well, you know, you're still not answering my question. Well, my point is I am answering your question in a way because regardless of what you are doing wrong you're not doing what you need to do right so this is what you need to do so again I'm assuming that you're holding it my way so you need to make sure that you know you're holding on the pad of your thumb so your thumb is maximum only going to be coming up sort of half a centimeter poking up over the violin over the fingerboard here and then when you're on um the lower strings your thumb is going to be sort of sliding under but never never coming at 
out over the way here like a what no always underneath like that and then your hand should always have air they should always be uh, let me show you there so I can't really hold it and show you but there should always be some air there it should never be sort of gripped up tight and then make sure that your wrist is down so your wrist should never be up your wrist should always be down so you're always it would be like um it'd just be like hanging off a ledge if you were literally hanging off the edge of a cliff by your fingertips the whole of your hand is down your hand is going to be up like that your whole whole of your hand is down and you're going to be holding from the very tippy tips of your fingers so it's the same sort of thing you're literally just hanging hanging off like you know hanging off some monkey bars that kind of thing you're just you're literally just hanging off with your thumb just up on the side but i think what's happening is is that people are just over gripping that area and encompassing their hand and it's kind of it's creating a ripple effect of of other problems the second thing that i i can think of that i think is probably causing this problem as well is holding the violin now this this may kind of this may be my doing somewhat but i, I do i am very clear and i do mention this in the videos i don't use shoulder rests and i don't use them because i don't i don't like them um i don't agree with them but i, I just don't like them i used to use a shoulder rest back in the day when i first started playing um and i can't remember why i didn't but i i didn't um and i enjoyed not having it there because i feel like um you know i can i can move the violin around my shoulder can move up and it's absolutely fine there's no tension in my shoulder by the way my shoulder's working absolutely fine but the thing about me is that i have quite a short distance between my chin and my shoulder if you've got a much longer neck then this is where you might sort of come unstuck a little bit because if that's the case then you've got to find You've got to find space to fill for all this and that means you're going to be lifting up your shoulder i mean that just looks this just the whole thing just looks ridiculous doesn't it so for me if i just i mean my shoulder just comes up that much maybe about an inch nothing that's that's ever causing me any pain any problems you know i, I can still do vibrato none of that kind of stuff so if you don't have a shoulder rest then I feel like you probably feel like you're going to drop the violin and I wonder whether that is where the problem is so because it feels unstable here you are gripping you're, you're death gripping here because you feel like it's going to drop I mean you may just be death gripping with your left hand anyway because it's just you're just not used to kind of relaxing your hand and you will get that in time I feel like if you're conscious of that that will that's something that will happen in time but you're not going to help yourself if you are um, ha having to grip too much here or feel like it's very unsafe here. So if you do have a shoulder rest, so if you do have a shoulder rest, I've managed to locate one out of my jaw in front of me. If you do have a shoulder rest, this is the one I always recommend, by the way. It's called the Wolf. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put a link to it underneath. It's called the Wolf Forte primo i'm not sure if that's coming out on camera or reflecting this is the one i like they do two versions of these one of these has got like a little kind of little piece of wire that goes there that drives me nuts because it forever comes off this grips onto the violin and does not fall off at all doesn't damage the violin none of that um so it's very good let me just put it on for you so when this is on oh come on when this is on we're looking like that it's very comfortable as well then it just sits there and it's much easier you know you don't really actually have to do anything again I just don't like it because it's it's too for me it feels it literally feels like my neck is going up and it's pulling my shoulder down and I instantly can't move so for me I just I've just gotten used to not playing with with one at all but what it will do is it will just it will help that balance there so it's it's very stable you know it's like you know it's like driving with with a seat belt on it makes you feel a lot more stable a lot more kind of strapped in and a lot more secure that way you can just do whatever you want is going on up here and you won't have to worry about it because it's already gripping here so I can 
you know, I, I, I can flap about in my hand here. Um, I don't have to grip it anymore because I know that when I'm moving about, there's no way I'm gonna drop the violin because it's also secure up here. So if that's the kind of the way you feel, then I would highly suggest that you get yourself a shoulder rest um, and start playing with that. If you feel like a shoulder rest is too comfortable, then you might just have to, to try some out, but you can alter the length on that a little bit, but it, it, you might just have to have a shoulder rest to kind of solve that problem. So to recap then, I think shoulder rest as we've discussed might be a problem because it's you feel like you're you're not stable enough here that's causing you to grip more up up here to compensate so the violin doesn't drop or slip or shoot out of your hand or you know whatever you feel and also the second thing is is that maybe you're not holding quite correctly enough that's kind of that there where if you put your hand up like this where the pad of your thumb sort of meets that that actual that knuckle joint there is pretty much where you're going to be putting the neck of the violin so pretty much opposite but you're always going to have this little hole but enough to kind of put a, a dice through that little hole you're always going to have that there so try not to try not to have it too high up that's kind of like a different holding technique and, and going to require you know everything to be sort of slightly different so just if you are doing it this way just just reaffirm that grip and make sure it's there and that's that's how I'm holding. But at all times, and if you can see, you can still see it there. I've still got a little bit of a hole there. I know that's probably lessened a little bit, but it's just because it's very difficult to um, sort of show you. There it is, so you can sort of see it there. So I've always got that, that hole there. I've always got that air there. And also my wrist, my wrist is down. So my wrist is down here. It's, it's never up. It's always, my fingers are just curling over and going straight almost like like that like they're just kind of gripping down so thank you very much for watching i hope that has kind of uh helped a little bit um but yeah just just kind of experiment uh with a shoulder rest or or not um so yeah thank you very much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye